everybody is part of some kind of community, and there are no communities as strong and united as tribes. In fact, some tribes are so very strong and united that the US Army is even scared of them. Yeah, really. These are the toughest tribes that are feared by the US Army. Number 15. Sentinelese Tribe The Sentinelese people are the only inhabitants of the northern Sentinel Island in the Bay of Bengal in India. The entire island is approximately the size of Manhattan, but what goes on there, nobody really knows. And that's because nobody is allowed in. The area is patrolled by the Indian Navy day and night. But why? Well, because the Sentinelese tribe has always been extremely hostile and violent against anyone who dared visit their island. They have systematically refused contact with the outside world. Still, today, they'll throw rocks and arrows at your boat if you get too close. They've already killed several people in the past that, by mistake, landed on the coasts of their island. And also, since the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Act of 1956 and 1959, it is prohibited to travel to the island in fear that the tribespeople will contract any disease to which they have no immunity. So it is no longer possible to visit in order to protect the Sentinelese tribe. But even if you could, would you take the risk of being attacked and potentially killed? Killed? Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Mohawk People the Mohawk people are a First Nation tribe from North America. You might recognize their notorious face paint and red feathers on their heads. They were a semi-sedentary tribe, which means they moved around a lot, but they lived in what is today New York State when the colonization of America started. Eventually, they had to move to Canada, but before that moment, they gave the British and the French a very hard time. They were fierce warriors that fought hard against the colonizers. They even made an alliance with two other tribes. They were called the Gatekeepers of the East, or the Iroquois Confederation. They actually fought with the British during the American Revolution. And just before that, the American Frontier Wars took place, where everybody was fighting for land. During that time, the Mohawk people survived by trading fur, and when the Dutch introduced fire guns to them, their victories increased exponentially, for obvious reasons. They were generally peacekeepers, but they were also excellent warriors when necessary. A fun fact about the Mohawk tribe is that only men could be chiefs, but only women could vote for the chief. Number 13. Shawnee People The Shawnee people are an Algonquin-speaking Native American tribe that lived in what today is Ohio, Kentucky, and Pennsylvania. Their chiefs were chosen on the basis of merit and skill, such as hunting. They were forced to leave their land by the Iroquois Confederation, and that's when they started having a reputation as wanderers. But don't be fooled, the Shawnee people were fierce and very skilled warriors. And they did give a hard time to the white colonizers when they were trying to steal their land. They even started a resistance movement led by the Shawnee chief called Tecumseh, who went down in the history books as the chief among chiefs because of his outstanding oratory, diplomatic, and military skills. Eventually, Tecumseh's resistance movement became the largest and greatest in the eastern half of North America. He managed to recruit thousands of warriors from many different tribes to stop the American expansion on their land, which today is Ohio and Indiana. He was a feared and great leader, and many men answered his call of war. Needless to say, the American army wasn't very happy about it, as he inspired a lot of loyalty from his men. Number 12. Asaro Mud Men Meet the other terrifying tribe from Papua New Guinea, the Asaro Mud Men. 
They live in the Eastern Highlands, and they are famous for their ghoulish clay masks, which they adorn with pig's tails and shells. They also paint their skin white, and they elongate their fingers with bamboo rods. They use this traditional attire to scare their enemies, and it works. Most tribes in Papua New Guinea are very scared of spirits, and so the Asero people decided to simply appear as them to scare off any other tribe that they had a brawl with. Legend has it, it all started when the Asero were defeated by an enemy tribe and had to flee into the Asero River. They then waited until dusk to escape under the cover of the night's darkness. And when they rose from the muddy riverbanks covered in mud, their enemies thought they were spirits and ran for their life. This victory is still told today, and that is why they dance and dress so creepily. They are imitating the spirits. Number 11. Chimbu Skeleton Tribe Meet the skeleton warriors of the Bugamo tribe in the Chimbu province of Papua New Guinea. These guys look straight out of a horror movie, or out of your worst nightmare. They paint their entire bodies with clay and ash to look like a living skeleton. But why do they do this? Well, as the saying goes, the best way of conquering your fears is to face them. The Bugamu people opted for a more hands-on approach. They actually embody their foes and ghosts. Kind of like Boggarts and Harry Potter, they become what they most fear. Their first contact with white European people was very recently, in the mid-90s. It isn't quite clear the reason behind such terrifying body paintings, but the common consensus is that their ancestors started doing it to scare off the bad spirits of the forest and be able to go about their business, and also to scare the heck out of superstitious rival tribes in the process. I mean, that's pretty badass. They live in a very traditional way. They take care of their pigs and their crops, but they are fierce warriors, and they've been at war with neighboring tribes for hundreds of years now. Number 10. Karubo Tribe the Karubo tribe is one of the few left in the world living in near total isolation from the outside world and modern society. They call themselves the Dasala tribe, and they are an indigenous people from the western Amazon Valley in Brazil. There are around 170 members of the tribe today. Their weapon of choice for hunting and for war is the club, and they're also masters at making poison darts. Little's known about their culture, except that from time to time they commit infanticide, which means to kill a child. But the reasons for this are completely unknown. Maybe it could be an ancestral ritual. Both the men and women of the tribe paint themselves in a bright red dye that they make from the Ruku plant. They are quite feared in the area because they are very good warriors, and they know the rainforest better than anyone, so they can hide an ambush in a way that you would never see them coming. In numerous occasions, they've shown very violent and aggressive behaviors against nearby communities. Today, the tribe is separated in two groups. There is the main group that remains loyal to their way of living, and a second, smaller group led by a woman called Maya that has frequent contact with people from other tribes and communities. Number 9. Suri Tribe, Ethiopia the Suri people are a sedentary and pastoral people in the remote region of southwestern Ethiopia, and there are an estimated 7,500 people in their tribe. They got a renowned reputation for subjecting themselves to extremely painful body modifications that are quite particular. They have lots of piercings and, most notoriously, lip plates. For them, these modifications are a sign of beauty, much like high heels or even tattoos for the Occidental civilizations like the European ones. In the Suri tribe, for a woman, the bigger the lip plate is, the larger her dowry will be. And these aren't your usual discreet piercings. These plates can be as big as their entire face. They start with a little puncture, and they keep stretching it more and more over time. It's unknown why exactly they started this curious tradition, but the most accepted theory is that they began piercing their lips to discourage slave trade amongst Surrey women. Young Surrey boys will learn how to stick fight from a very young age, and they perform duels quite 
often, but they had a science to it that's a lot similar to modern day boxing in a way. For Surrey fighters, physical strength is as important as tactics and studying your opponent, so they'll sit through every fight studying the moves and techniques that other fighters use. Number 8. Huarani Tribe the Huarani people are a Native American tribe from the Amazonian region of Ecuador. They are also locally known as the Alca, which literally means savage. They used to be hunter-gatherers, but in the last 40 years, their territory has been victim of oil searching and illegal logging, so they have become settled like many other tribes in the area. They used to have a lot of conflicts with neighboring tribes, and they are quite good fighters. Their weapon of choice is the spear, which allows them to engage in close combat, but for hunting, they use the blowgun, which are typically from 3 to 4 meters long, and the arrows of which are dipped in curare poison. This poison is extremely powerful. It paralyzes the muscles almost instantly and causes the prey to stop breathing. They also happen to use poison to fish. I know it sounds impossible, but they've been doing it for centuries. They use a special liana found in the Amazon and they smash the rod to unleash the juice that's inside. This juice has a potent chemical that literally takes away all the oxygen in the water, so the fish die and float to the surface. So if you find yourself wandering around the rainforest in Ecuador, whatever you do, do not Cross a Huarani tribes person. Number 7. Yali Tribe. The Yali tribe had the first contact with the white man in 1961, and they live in the highlands in Papua New Guinea. They are considered the smallest tribe in the country, and I say considered because some anthropologists are convinced that there are still many tribes that we don't know about in Papua New Guinea. But this tribe in particular was extremely feared and dreaded by everyone that knew them. And the reason is quite shocking. They're cannibals. Yeah, you heard that right. They eat human flesh. They're one of the pygmy nations, which is an ethnic group of dwarf people. The tallest they can reach is 1 meter 50. And even if they are quite short, they are extremely feared by their enemies. And that alone is proof enough of their ferocity. The reason why they were so absolutely feared is because they completely destroyed the bodies of their enemies. Not only did they eat the meat and organs, they even turned the bodies into dust and threw it in the valley. This practice started out of the fear of their spirits coming back to haunt them. The men don't use clothing of any kind. They wear only a traditional penis sheath and rings around their waist. And the women wear a skirt made out of reed. Number 6. Goroka the Goroka tribe of Papua New Guinea is a very famous one due to their elaborate headdresses and jewelry. They use parrot feathers, feathers of birds of paradise, and colorful tissue. But the most valuable adornments are the ones made out of seashells, because they represent prosperity and wealth. Because of that, when a young man wants to marry a young woman, he presents her with a seashell necklace. Centuries ago, the Garoka people used tiny pieces of pearl instead of money. Their culture and traditions are very strongly linked to the coast and the ocean. The Garoka people lived in absolute isolation from the outside world for a long time. This wasn't according to their own wishes, but due to persistent tribal wars and harsh natural conditions. They have very strong family ties, where everyone has their own role and responsibility, and the oldest member is considered the head of the family, having the last say in all matters. They are fierce warriors, and they are very much respected and feared throughout the region. Number 5. Kazakh The Kazakh people are from Kazakhstan, Asia. The name means wanderer, free, independent, and warrior. They appeared during the 15th century from an amalgam of several Turkic tribes and of the Mongols, which are still considered today to have been the greatest warriors in human history. Remember Genghis Khan? Yeah, that was their leader. They were a nomadic tribe and their traditions revolve around livestock, but they are also excellent hunters. They mainly hunt with golden eagles in Siberia during the winter 
year under extremely harsh conditions, but eagle hunters are very well respected within the tribe. They're very good at wrestling, and they perform wrestling matches publicly very often. This is a tribe that hasn't bowed down to anyone at any point in history. They're tough, resilient, and incredibly strong. They're also completely self-sufficient, which means no matter when or where, they will have shelter, water, and food. And that is very important if you have enemies. Many great armies tried to invade their territory, but they failed one after the other. They also have a great power of adaptability. They can train their bodies to adapt to any kind of weather, no matter how extreme. Number 4. Chukchi the Chukchi are an indigenous people that live in the Arctic region of Russia. They are the closest Asiatic relatives of the indigenous Native American people. It's important to note that Russia tried to wage war against the Chukchi many times in history, but never once won. At one point, the leader of the Chukchi killed the Russian commander and they kept his head as a trophy for several years. After many attempts of defeating the Chukchi and failing miserably, the Russians then decided to stop the conflict because it was causing them too much much money and also bloodshed, and that's when they started peacefully trading. So this tribe literally defeated the almighty country of Russia. That's no small feat if you ask me. They mainly eat reindeer and arctic sea mammals like walrus, seals, whales, and also fish. Their religion is shamanist, which means that they hold sacrifices and ceremonies for divination and healing. They believe that everything in the universe has a spirit, even inanimate objects, and those spirits can either be benevolent or evil. They are divided into two chief groups, the reindeer Chukchi that live in the mainland and are nomads, and the maritime Chukchi that live in the Arctic and Bering Coast and have fixed villages. To move around, they build wooden boats with skin covers. Number 3. Maori the Maori are Polynesian people from New Zealand, and they are worldly famous for their outstanding and very intimidating haka dance. This is where the men perform screams of war and make very scary facial expressions. If you've ever seen an All Blacks rugby game, that's what they do at the beginning of each match. Thankfully, when the Europeans arrived in New Zealand in the 18th century, the relationships with the Maori were mostly peaceful, except the part about land confiscation. And after the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840, the two cultures coexisted. They are a very close-knit group that have protected their culture and their history to this day. They self-named themselves. Maori in their language means ordinary or normal to differentiate themselves from the deities and spirits. They are fierce warriors, and the very first time Captain James Cook approached the island by boat, the Maori people managed to kill four European men before they could even land. Only one Maori was killed during this incident. During the first years of European and Maori coexistence, there were many incidents from the Europeans that unleashed subsequent revenge attacks from the Maori that were quite furious. They are not a tribe to mess with. Number 2. Cheyenne the Cheyenne people are a Native American tribe from the Great Plains, and today they mainly live in Minnesota and Montana, United States. When the Europeans arrived to America, they started a ferocious war with the Cheyenne people, which were already waging war with their traditional enemies, the Crow people. They adopted the horse culture in the early 18th century, which they still have today. In their early days, they lived by trading wild rice and hunting bison. The most famous Cheyenne person was Motes Ianotes which I'm probably not pronouncing right, or sweet grass, which I hope I am. He was a prophet who predicted the coming of the horse, the cow, the white man, and many other new things that did in fact later happen. They used a lot of medicinal plants for healing and for ceremonies. The sacred arrow is the male symbol of power, and the sacred buffalo hat is the female symbol of power. They lived in decorated skin teepees, and their clothing was also made out of skin. Both men and women braided their hair in two, one braid at each side of the neck, and used bird feathers to decorate their head. They had a council of 44 headsmen, four for each subgroup and four elders. Number 1. Kiowa the Kiowa people are a Native American tribe. They were the closest allies to the dreaded Comanche. The Kiowa waged war against anyone who the Comanche tribe was at war with, including the U.S. Army. 
Both tribes were particularly hostile to white men and killed thousands during their raiding and trading days in the American Southwest and Mexico. They took part in the Plains Wars of the post-Civil War era, a war that saw one of the most brutal fights between the American government and the Native American people that were fighting to keep their land as well as their way of life. They fought frequently with both nearby enemies and far beyond their territory. They were notable in the plains for their far distance raids that sometimes could occur as far as Mexico. Their entire culture was built around war. They are what is called a warrior society, and almost all of their warfare was conducted mounted on horses. Young Kiowa men had to prove their worth through bravery and skill to be invited into one of the warrior societies. When you think about the typical Native American from old cowboy movies, the Kiowa are it. They were ruthless and vicious, but I guess you would be too if someone suddenly came into your land and tried to steal it from you. As you can see, the almighty US Army has had a lot of enemies throughout history, and many of them didn't even have much more than a horse and a bow and arrow. But if you have passion and you're fighting for a cause that matters to you, sometimes that is all you need. But what about today? Who do you think the US Army still fears? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!